The California Drought, Environmental and Economic Impacts Californians are running out of drinking water and their food supply is threatened. We are currently in the fourth year of a record-breaking drought throughout California. All of the state is considered to be in drought, but more than 80% is in extreme or exceptional drought. Much of this drought has to do with common pool resources. Those are shared resources which can be exploited by anyone. However, the use of that resource by one group takes away the amount available to others. NASA predicts that California needs 11 trillion gallons or 17 million Olympic-sized swimming pools to recover from this drought. Today, this video will talk about three main environmental impacts, including fisheries, wildfires, and agriculture. The water in hatcheries is too warm for the fish to survive because there is so little mountain runoff. Rainbow and steelhead trout have been released from hatcheries at a much younger age and smaller size than usual. There have been 406 wildfires in January 2014. Wildfire risk is up due to dry vegetation. There has been an increase of 36% over the past five years. These fires damage property, cause pollution, and displace and kill wildlife. Finally, decreased groundwater causes a reduction in crops and jobs, which negatively affects agriculture. Farmers use 80% of the water in California. According to a report from UC Davis, the direct cost of the drought to agriculture will be $1.84 billion for 2015. The total impact to all economic sectors is an estimated $2.74 billion, compared with $2.2 billion in 2014. The state's farmers and ranchers currently receive more than $46 billion annually in gross revenue. There will also be a loss of about 10,100 seasonal jobs directly related to farm production, which is more significant than the 7,500 initially forecasted. When considering the spillover effects of the farm losses on all other economic sectors, the employment impact of the 2015 drought more than doubles to 21,000 lost jobs. California's drought poses significant concerns for the state's economy. Experts predict that 2015 losses will total over $2 billion and 21,000 job losses. One sector that is most significantly affected is agriculture. Agriculture stands to lose about $902 million this year alone. The drought has on the state's agriculture. Let's look at a basic supply and demand chart. We have price on our y-axis, quantity on our x-axis, a downward sloping demand curve, and an upward sloping supply curve. We have equilibrium where the two intersect. The supply curve is going to shift inward to and then our economy is going to move to a new equilibrium with a higher price and lower quantity. Thus both producers and consumers are negatively harmed by the drought. This supply and demand relationship can be seen through fruits and vegetables. The U.S. Department of Agriculture predicts fruit prices may rise as much as 6% this year, while vegetables may go up as much as 3% nationwide. So what can be done? Groundwater drilling is an option, however the groundwater is already being depleted. Fog catchers can catch up to 750 liters of fresh water each day. Simply conserving water will help in this crisis. Lastly, desalination. This is a process which removes minerals from saline water and makes fresh water suitable for human consumption or irrigation. To decide what is the best solution and if a project should carry on, one must do a cost-benefit analysis. This will determine if the benefits are greater than the costs and if the project should proceed. To solve for net benefits, you take the sum of present value of benefits minus present value of cost where R is the discount rate, T is the year, B is the sum of the benefits in year T, and C is the sum of cost in year T. With all that being said, it would be difficult to run a cost-benefit analysis on these possible solutions because there is not enough knowledge on how much they would actually cost and how effective they would be. 
To sum up, we went over a brief background about the California drought and its environmental impacts. We looked at how significantly the lack of rain affected the economy and studied the supply and demand curve. Lastly, we closed with some possible solutions and taught how to use the net benefit equation to see if a project's benefits outweigh the costs. Thanks for watching.